Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Bernoun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Things are definitely heating up uh, even more so once again in the Middle East there. Uh, the latest here is uh, this video here coming out of uh, TV uh, Net that is showing a large convoy of tanks and equipment by the Turkish government headed down to the Iraqi border uh, right there on the Turkish side uh, near a city called Salapi or Silapai, however you might pronounce the name of this Turkish city there. Uh, and that happens to be right here. If you take a look here on your map here, we're looking at Mosul right here where the heavy fighting is going on now with uh, U.S.-led coalition helping the Iraqis to liberate the city of Mosul which has been a big concern for us as well because we've been concerned that what's going on in Mosul is only a, a, a stage uh, being set for an attack maybe later on Syria. Or has the United States gave up on this idea altogether? Could it be that Russia has actually delivered a massive blow to the New World Order agenda by stopping uh, the U.S. and the allies there from toppling Syria, one of the countries that they anticipated on overthrowing until Russia stepped in? Not really sure as of yet, but anyway, right here, this little town right here on the border of Iraq and, of course, in the far northeastern side of Syria, Salapi or Silapai, is where the Turkish tanks are right now getting ready to invade inside of uh, this country here, uh, uh, Iraq. And of course, we know that President Erdogan is stating that Mosul actually belongs to Turkey. This is really an invention of him dreaming back the ancient Ottoman Empire that was defeated by the British in World War I, and the British took over, and of course the British have divided all this land up in between the different nations that they have now, which is Syria, Jordan, uh, Israel, etc. All this has been divided during that time period. And of course, also Tyler Durden has just come out with an article about this as well. It says in the latest provocation between Turkey and Iraq, the Turkish military began deploying tanks and other armored vehicles to the town of Selapai near the Iraqi border in a move of defense in, in a move the defense minister said on Tuesday was related to the fight against terrorism and developments across the border. But as a reminder, Iraq had previously slammed the presence of Turkish troops on its territory when in October the 5th, Baghdad warned of regional war if Turkey does not withdraw its forces. Now, again, the Iraqi uh, forces have once again warned Turkey not to come inside of their territory. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. In other news as well, turning our attention to, the, to Pope Francis on his trip back to Italy, uh, he actually, the question comes up in there, Pope says he believes a ban on female priests is forever. Pope Francis said on Tuesday he believes the Roman Catholic Church's ban on women becoming priests is forever and will never be changed in some of his most definitive remarks on the issue. He was speaking aboard uh, a, a plane taking him back to Rome from Sweden in the Free Willing News Conference with a reporter that, that has become a tradition of his return flights from trips abroad. Now, that only reminds me of what Daniel states over here in chapter 11, verse 37, when he says, Neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers, and neither Neither the desire of women nor any god shall he regard, for he shall magnify himself above all. And the reason I bring this up, the God of his fathers, being that this, in other words, he should be uh, acknowledging that the, his fathers being the, the, the apostles, for example, or you could even go back and say the, the patriarchs of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the, the, the God of Israel, for example, did believe in women in authority. We have Hulda, the prophetess, who even the high priest of Israel goes to to get advice on what to do. You have Deborah. You have so many women that God had in, in positions there. We even had women working at the temple. Uh, they were called temple priests that were women uh, as well. Now, this is not, I'm not talking about the Levitical priesthood itself, but they were there at the door. That's a big issue altogether. But the point is, is he's, he, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. In other words, knowing that Hulda was a prophetess, knowing that she was in the office of, of this caliber, knowing that Yeshua himself, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, had Mary Magdalene that was the closest one to him, loved more than any of the apostles that there was there. And there was many that believed 
believe that uh, there were many women that actually spoke as well during those times. Very interesting uh, argument to look at. We've actually done a lot of reports on that in times past. There's a little section on our YouTube channel if you want to go in there and look about uh, the issue of women. We've covered a lot of these things from a biblical perspective. It might be interesting for you to take a look at. Anyway, but he has no desire of women nor any God shall he, shall he regard. In other words, he's just making up the rules as he goes along, perhaps. I don't know. I know there's a lot of argument. They say, well, Paul said this and Paul said that. But like I said, check out some of the videos we have on that. You might find, find that interesting. U.S. officials say North Korea preparing a missile launch. And of course, that's being picked up as well. Uh, also by um, uh, the uh, Fox News as well. That, uh, yes, it... They're preparing to launch an intermediate range missile. There has been several that have spoken about this anonymously that it, uh, as far as in the military, they don't want to bring out much about this. They expect this within the next 24 to 72 hours. According to uh, the UN Security Council, this is in violation of the resolution that they have brought against uh, North Korea. Uh, but uh, let's just hope that North Korea doesn't put anything on the tip of this missile, that it's just another test there of them trying to flex their muscles. They're showing that uh, that they still have some say so. And of course, this is during uh, amid the times where the US and South Korea are also again doing war games uh, uh, right there uh, just below North Korea's border there. Uh, so, another related story as well that we're looking at here that just came out today Australia and Indonesia in talks over joint South China Sea patrols. According to the report here, they say that they believe that it would bring more stability to the region there. Uh, doing patrols in the South China Sea, including the Philippines, uh, Indonesia area there, uh, doing joint uh, military patrols in the South China Sea. Now, I don't think that'll bring about peace and stability. If anything, I'm afraid it will only antagonize the situation with China and make it even worse there. Um, All right, so we found the, uh, the volcano once again. This is the Sinabung volcano in Indonesia with expulsions of uh, in, incandescent material has evicted uh, the population. As you can see in the photos here on your screen here, it is spewing tremendous amount of ash and soot into the air there, uh, causing evacuations of the people to leave the area. Of course, you know, breathing that no doubt would suffocate a person to death. Uh, just tremendous uh, photographs of this volcano. This volcano was asleep for like hundreds and hundreds of years there, from what I understand, about 400 years is what they estimate that it was asleep. Came to life, I believe, in 2010, then 2013, and again now here in 2016, once again rumbling back up to life. Uh, again, that's in Sinabung in Indonesia where this eruption is taking place today. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.